Good afternoon. My name is Calvin. I work for Egg 11. A question to you, um, Dr. Shangula. The Deputy Medical Officer for England, Professor Jonathan Van Tam, writing just five days ago in the Sunday Telegraph, says, people who have received a COVID-19 vaccine could still pass the virus on to others and should continue following lockdown rules. We got reminded of this reality and the possibility of this after two members of the United States Congress, Representative Stephen Lynch and Representative Loris Trahan, tested positive after getting the COVID-19 vaccine. What are the chances of passing the COVID-19 to the next person soon after getting a jab. Are those rare cases? What are the likelihoods? If we get vaccinated, should we still continue to wear our mask and socially distancing? Can we still get COVID-19 and pass on? Are the chances very high or is a rare case? And on the issue of the regulations that we have, which prohibit the repatriation of a body from one country to the next. I had an engagement with the ED just a few days ago concerning a Namibian that died in Congo Brazzaville. And according to Namibian officials, it was COVID. The family says they were told it was malaria. It's a month and some weeks now the body is still there. Our regulations say we cannot, as you say, unless we repart we, we, we bend the body. In your description and clarification of this issue, you do not take us into the science, the point at which a corpse spreads COVID-19 to the next person. How does that happen? to the point that you have to bend the body for it to come through. You are telling us that this body is highly contagious. Yet you have told us over and over again that COVID-19 is spread when we breathe and there are droplets from our and passes on. How exactly does a dead body spread COVID-19? Thank you. Thank you very much for your, for, your, for your question. Um, the first question related to whether a person who gets COVID-19 COVID vaccine can still pass on the infection to the other person. And you quoted um, uh, an article in, you said in the Daily Telegraph or whatever the source is. In my statement, I said anybody who comes into Namibia having received COVID-19 vaccination must still produce a PCR a negative test. There is that requirement and I mentioned that in my statement. The, the vaccine, we must understand it, the vaccine is not a medicine, which you will say, if you get a medicine against COVID-19, then it, it will cure you, cure you, and then you, have, you no longer have the disease, you are, you are cured. The vaccine does not work like that. If you get vaccinated today and you are already infected, you can still pass on the virus to another person because the vaccine does not kill. When it gets into your body, it's not going to kill the virus which is there. 
what it does is going to stimulate the immune response for the body to be able to fight future infection, not the current infection. So that is the difference. So even if we are in vaccinated today and you were already infected with COVID-19, you will still be in a position to pass on the virus to the next person. Now, whether we will continue to wear masks. You see, in prevention measures, we are using a combination of measures. We wear masks, but we still sanitize, sanitize. Wash, we still wash our hands, although we have got masks on. We still wash our hands. We still maintain social distance. So the vaccine will join that list of measures to combine to give more effect to the prevention of transmission of infection. So it does not really mean that once you've got vaccination, you throw out everything. You do it because maybe the in immune response have not yet been um, developed. Maybe you were already infected and then you can still pass it on to the next person. Therefore, it is important that despite the vaccine, you must still continue to wear your masks, wash your hands, sanitize, social distancing. Your last question related to a case um, in, uh, in Brazzaville. I do not want to go into the detail of the case, but fortunately I had the first-hand information about the case. And I do not know whether you have the same information which results in the impasse. I can give you, I can tell you confidently that um, the, the case in question is a COVID death. This one I can tell you because I have documentary evidence to that. And option was given for the cremation for the body to be uh, repatriated to Namibia. And that is where the, where, the, where the things stand. If it's cremated, as I mentioned in the regulations, it's allowed to be repatriated to Namibia. Thank you. Well, we are getting older, so we don't have to be here the whole afternoon. This is just an update. Is there any last question? Yes. Um, yes, Your Excellency. There was no mention of sports. How, what's going to happen in terms of may sports continue? Um, may sports events now be limited as well. We have rugby, soccer, other events that were planned to go on this year. Um, what has the ministry, what has the, uh, the task force decided in terms of allowing sports events to continue? Also, take, make it so we just yeah, close. Doctor, if you may allow me, I don't, I don't think you have wholly answered my question. You haven't taken us into the science you haven't taken us into how exactly a corpse spreads COVID-19. How does that happen? Can you take us there? We want to understand because you are saying we have to cremate. So how exactly does that happen? How, how the... How does COVID spread from the dead body? Oh, 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 how COVID... 19 spread from a, a dead body. Okay. Um, when a person died of COVID-19, the virus is still within the body of that individual. And you know the natural progression of the body, it gets into lysis. In other words, 
it is where it starts to disintegrate. The cells start dying. The virus in the cells gets exposed. And then within those type of fluids which are coming out of the body which has undergone lysis, then anybody who comes in contact with that. It's just like you can, um, you, you have heard that the virus in the air can be there for a number of hours. It's just in the air. You, 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 you sneeze, it gets into the, into the air, and it remains there up to nine hours. And then you can inhale it from there. So it's not in your body, but it's in the air. So the virus does not necessarily always to be in the body for it to be infective. You can, take, you can pick it up on any surface, but not in the body. The same happens whether it comes from a living person or it comes from a dead person. So that is the mechanism. Thank you. Yeah, I was about to learn too, but I'll join my colleague there. That's a good question. I'm not quite clear. So, Minister, if the body is dead for a long time, is there a time limit? I'm just joining my colleague there, because I'm also coming from that school. Is dead body, is there a time limit? How long can a body be dead and not be harmful? How long does it take all its forever? The, the time from, uh, for the virus to survive outside the host differs in terms of whether it is in the air, in terms of whether it is on the surface, in terms of whether it is also the type of surface as far as the evidence which we, information we have is concerned. Now, when it comes to the a dead body, uh, I mentioned that when a person dies, the body undergone changes. And you will also find a situation when it starts oozing either through the natural orifice, like the ears uh, and other orifices. And that's why whenever a person dies, the medical, the, the, the health worker are told the first thing you do, you close all the orifices with a non, um, no, what is it? Like, like um, so that the fluid cannot ooze out. So that is the first thing, but that is at the beginning. As the days goes on, as the hours goes on, then the natural process of um, the disintegration of the body and the cells and the dying of the cells, they take place naturally uh, until you know, if, if, if the body is not, pro is not protected, then when we talk about the body decompose, the decomposition of the body, that's a natural progression of a dead body when the cell no longer uh, uh, functions. And the virus, they normally host in the cells, and when the cells disintegrate, they release the viruses. It can then, when the fluid oozes out, because of the composition, then the virus also they are released. So that is the the strange mechanism of. So, supposing I know when you are sending our body back from places like in America, they will ask you to buy special coffins that will are safe. Is it maybe possible to have a special boots, coffin, that cannot allow anything to come out? Because when somebody dies, you know, I, I was involved in that, to try to send their body back. It's a headache. You go through all kinds of procedures. But eventually you get a coffin, which is so adjusted, 
that is kind of safe to export or send the body back. In the future, maybe are we going to be able to have coffins that don't allow any leakage from the body? Yes. We work on the scientists. It's your task to work on it. We have that. I think all of you, as few as you are, had a chance. And as the days are going, we will be shorter and shorter because we all know the situation. With that, I would like to thank you and hope that situation improves, that our numbers go down. Thank you very much.